Welcome back alpha hunters. So today's video, we're gonna talk a little bit about price action, which is the bars that you see on the screen, right? And indicators, which are moving averages and the MACD, RSI, and many, many more that we are not gonna go into all the indicators, but we're gonna just talk about some high level concepts about indicators and just from price action. So with price action, let's understand just a few things. You know, there's some pros and cons about price action and indicators, but with price action, it's gonna trump any indicator. There's gonna be times that indicators are telling you to be bearish or they're gonna have a bearish signal and the market might be moving bullish. So the only thing that really matters is gonna be price action. Price action is what matters, period. Now price action is also gonna tell you what the price is trying to do, okay? Uh, before it really starts to make or change its trend uh, in a different direction or top out or bottom out, the stock or the market will try to tell you what it is trying to do. And the key thing about price action is understanding gaps and the intraday price levels. If you can understand these, you will understand what the market's trying to do, certain levels to really pay attention to. But the downside to only looking at price action is you can get tricked, you can get whipsawed around a little bit as the market might start to move in one direction with price action, but then immediately turn and reverse and go the other direction. It's just one of those things that it happens. And this is one reason why we use stop losses in trading because sometimes we are wrong in our analysis. But when you become efficient at reading the price action, you can typically have better reward to risk setups. So what are some of the pros and cons about indicators? Well, well, first off, there's so many indicators, okay? So what are the good ones? What are the bad ones? You know, what settings do they need to be set to for them to be good, to be efficient? And a lot of this is gonna depend upon you and your timeline and how quickly you potentially wanna get in and out of trades, that kind of thing. So I'm not gonna delve deeply into how to set up indicators and what are good indicators, but just understand there are a lot of good ones out there and there are also some bad ones out there. So all indicators are going to use the actual price action information. So this is why usually indicators are a little late to recognize new trends or that trends are ending. And really you're not gonna be able to rely on just one. Now a pro of the indicators though is you're not gonna get chopped around as much. You know, it smooths out that price overreaction. So if the price does overreact one way or another, well the indicators kind of do smooth that out. So potentially you don't get chopped around as much, but since they do have a smoothing effect, they're not gonna be as good an entry and exit points, but it is gonna be a lot easier to automate indicator type trading or automate your trading period using indicators. So what is the best way to kind of go about trading? Well, that's really gonna be kind of up to you and I'm not trying to deep dive into indicator analysis and how to set up indicators because a lot of it's just gonna depend upon you your timeline, time frame, that kind of thing, and what kind of trading you're trying to do, okay? This is just meant to be like, hey, you know, there is a difference between looking at price action and indicators, okay? Price action is is what it is, right? It's it's the actual price movement. It's the, it's the bars that you see on the screen here, the candlesticks, and then the indicators are gonna be your moving averages, and then down below I have the MACD and RSI, and I'm not gonna say that this is the best way to do anything, but I kind of do a little bit of a hybrid approach where I, I do look a lot at a price action. That's the main thing I, I focus on because that is about the only thing that matters It's price action. We trade price action, we don't trade technicals. Now you can definitely trade technicals. I do know people that do that and uh, they're successful. I've never kind of gone that route, but you can definitely do that. But for just some examples real quick, if you look at this, this little point right here, well, we got above this little double top here on this downtrend and that was a little bit of a uh, a chop around right a lot of people that freaked a lot of people out and some people probably went bullish there as we got above this double top so there are some issues with just looking at price action and there are going to be some issues with just looking at indicators right if you're just looking at indicators and you're looking for an indicator type move you might have been a little late into this rally here that we had on the market and you might've been a little late to exit, you know, if some of the indicators didn't tell you to exit until it got over here and you got in a little late, well, you didn't really make much, right? So there are different ways to kind of go about it. The other, the other spot that I would like to show you, especially on price action, is this spot right here, 
you know, we kind of sold down pretty good for two months or so, a month and a half. And then we got this candle, which is above these two here. A lot of people thought the market was going bullish. And then obviously you see the market then turned right around and went bearish for three days. So there are definitely some issues with just looking at price action and just looking at technicals. But I wanted to just call out some of the pros and cons because as new to trading or new to just looking at stock and price charts, it can be very overwhelming because there's a lot of information. One, you got to get used to just what the chart looks like, right? So if we just hide, hide all that, just learning what the chart looks like is, is different, right? Many people have never seen this before. So just seeing this is, can be a little bit overwhelming, but then if you add in indicators and stuff like that, like moving averages, it, you know, it can be pretty overwhelming. So there are, there are definitely other times where the indicators are potentially a little late to getting into the market. Like this move here, like this, this pattern right here, the market was telling you that it's trying to go higher, especially when this candle came in. And then some of these indicators I got on the screen, they're not telling you to get in bullish until about over here. Okay. So there's definitely some issues with both and I, I can't tell you which way is the best way to go. I do like looking more of the price action because that just kind of gives me a little bit more of the better reward to risk type setups that I'm looking for, but it's not the end all be all. I would definitely, if you are definitely wanting to learn more about price action, you definitely want to focus on gaps in price action. Take for this day right here. We had a pretty large gap down after several days down in a row, right? You see several red candles in a row, four to be exact. And then we gapped down. I believe that in morning was a 3% gap down. And so we just see strong buying come in and you could probably say that that was going to be the bottom because that was just super strong buying at such an extended level that it made a lot of sense that that would be just kind of the bottom of this general area. So the things that you definitely want to focus on for price action is looking and learning the gaps, where gaps are gapping to, how strong the gap is, is it above or below a major volume area? And then what does the price action do after the gap happens, right? Let's take this one for instance, right? Let's say you gap up over this, you know, double top resistance area and you should be thrusting higher. The market should be pushing higher and it's not doing that, you gotta be very cautious about a potential fake out, right? Those are things that you kind of really need to learn with price action that indicators just kind of don't tell you. And then on the indicator side, the things you really wanna focus on is finding indicators that meet what you are looking for in your, in your trading, right? There's many different indicators out there and really trying to find the indicators that fit to you and then figuring out also the settings of those indicators that really work for you. Those are very crucial because there's not an end all be all. Okay. I know a lot of people say that this indicator works 99% of the time. No, it does not work that way. It really doesn't. If it was that easy, everybody would do it. You just need to find what fits kind of to your style because trading is very much a style. Just like everybody has like their own style with clothes. Trading is very much going to be a personal preference and kind of like your own comfort zone with what you are seeing on the screen. Okay. And with indicators, and you definitely want to have more than one because you know, just having one can give you some false readings or false information about what you are seeing in the current marketplace. Okay. So hopefully this is a little helpful. It's just meant to be a quick understanding of price action and indicators. I do prefer to look mostly at price action. I do kind of watch certain indicators just to see what the indicators are kind of thinking. And typically if I get in, it's going to be on price action and I will watch indicators for a short period of time after to see if they back up my thesis on what I was thinking about my trades. So hopefully this is beneficial. I will be working to get out some more videos about specific type price action, specific type indicators, but I know there are plenty of resources out there if you are impatient like I am. So have a great day. Alrighty. Take care, Alpha Hunters.